Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you, yes you, make your game dev dreams become a reality. Today's part 19 of the AI series where we're talking about round spawning and scaling up enemies as we progress through those rounds. I'm going to use the words round, level, and wave interchangeably throughout this because that's just in my mind they're all kind of the same thing depending on which type of game you're playing or type of game you're making. We're going to approach this in two parts. The first one we're going to do is the round spawning. And that's kind of boring without the scaling, but it's really important just to get that piece working before we start trying to add in the scaling. And we're going to approach the round spawning in two different ways. One is going to be, we are going to wait for the player to clear all the enemies before we start spawning the next wave. The other one will be, as soon as we spawn the last enemy in a wave, we will start spawning in the next wave. Once we've implemented that, we'll start moving on to the scaling. And we'll approach the scaling the same way we did in, I think it was AI series part 10, where we first did the enemy scriptable objects, where the scriptable object will be responsible for scaling up the input values. And then in this one, it'll be a little bit different because we'll return a new scaled up enemy scriptable object. And that's really important to do because if we scale up the base values, then we end up with a weird scenario where the first time I play the game, let's say my enemy has 100 health, I get to level two and I have it where they have 200 health now, let's say. If I go back and start level one again, because I've modified the base scriptable object, now my level one enemies have 200 life. That's probably not what you're looking for. You probably want the first level to have consistent enemy difficulty, right? So it's really important we do this scale up and then return new enemy scriptable object and then use that new scriptable object to do the spawning, keeping our initial scriptable objects separate. And the cool thing about what we did even in the last video where we did first spawning enemies is we reused the core code of the enemy spawner to spawn the enemies, meaning our first spawning we don't have to do anything to, and they will automatically spawn enemies at the current levels scaled up difficulties. And the other thing that I want to say before we jump in is we are going to be using an animation curve to define our scaling of the enemies. So if we have something where it's just straight linear every time they get 10% harder, it's kind of easy to guess how hard it's going to be and it's less engaging for the players. If we use an animation curve, we can really customize a lot better how we want the enemies to scale. Maybe we know around level 20, our players start getting really strong weapons and we want to start ramping up the health more at level 20, for example. So the animation curve is a really great tool to define our scaling and before we go any further, I just want to give a huge shout out to everyone who's supporting me on Patreon right now. I really appreciate it. Every bit helps the channel grow, reach more people, add value to more people, and that means that more people are making their game development dream become a reality. If you want to help me in that cause, you can show your support on Patreon, patreon.com slash academy. You can get your name up on the screen, you can get a voice shout out, and some other cool perks. In this tutorial, we're going to start on the sample scene where we left off on the previous video. We'll create a new c -sharp script called Scaling Scriptable Object, but before we get into that, we're going to open up the Enemy Spawner where this will be used. And we'll be modifying the Enemy Spawner to do round-based spawning. When we jump over to Visual Studio, at the top of the Enemy Spawner, we'll add a private serialized field int level, set that to zero by default, and create two private ints enemies alive and spawned enemies, and also set both of those to be zero by default. I'll scroll down to the private I enumerator spawn enemies, and in there, we will increment level with level plus plus, and I'll also set spawned enemies and enemies alive to be zero. If we scroll down further to where do spawn enemy happens, after we spawned an enemy, we'll add a delegate to the enemy.onDie with enemy.onDie plus equals handle enemy death. And in there, we will decrement enemies alive by one because an enemy has died. We'll check if enemies alive is zero, meaning there are no enemies still alive. Then we'll start a new coroutine to start spawning enemies, which remember increments a level, so that way we have a constant onslaught of enemies coming at us. But we can't just do this if enemies alive is zero. We also need to check if the number of spawned enemies is equal to the target number of enemies to spawn. Only then should we start the next one. But maybe we don't want to wait until all of these enemies have died before we start spawning the next wave. Maybe we want something that's a little bit more aggressive with the spawning, where as soon as we've spawned all of the enemies for a particular round, we would like to have the next round start. That way the players don't get a break in between rounds. To support both of these, what we'll do is at the top, add a public bool continuous spawning. We'll go at the end of the while loop in spawn enemies and check if continuous spawning is true. Then we will start the coroutine to spawn enemies, which would then start up the next level. 
we hop back to the Unity editor and click play with the defaults of continuous spawning being false, we'll see that we'll only spawn one enemy, and once it dies, another enemy will spawn and the level will be incremented. That works pretty well, but if I also change this to have continuous spawning, we'll see that after the spawn delay, the level is incremented and more enemies spawn. So great, round-based spawning works both ways, but it's kind of boring if you get the exact same experience every level. So what we'll do next is open up the scaling scriptable object and start setting that up. If we hop back to Visual Studio and open up the scaling scriptable object, the first thing we'll do is add the create asset menu attribute and pass in the file name of scaling configuration, the menu name of scriptable object slash scaling configuration. And inside of here, we're going to define the scaling via a curve. That way we can have a non-linear increase in difficulty as the player gets farther and farther into our game. So we'll do that by defining a public animation curve health curve, and we'll repeat that same thing for everything that we want to have scale with our enemies. What we'll do in this video is have health curve, damage curve, speed curve, spawn rate curve, and spawn count curve. But anything that you would like your enemies to scale as the levels progress, you can define an animation curve here for and scale it in the same way that we're going to modify these values. Next, we'll open up the enemy scriptable object because this has all the values that we'd like to scale up or references to all the values we'd like to scale up for an enemy. We'll add a new public enemy scriptable object scale up for level function that accepts a scaling scriptable object we'll call scaling and an int the level. Before we call setup enemy, we'll call this function to make sure that we get a new enemy scriptable object that has been scaled up for the particular level that we're on. So I'll do enemy scriptable object scaled up object equals create instance, which comes from the scriptable object class, and type that to be enemy scriptable object. Then for every value that we have on the scriptable object, we will assign it to be whatever value we have here and then scale it up with the scaling. So we'll do scaled up enemy dot name equals the name. The prefab is the prefab. The attack configuration, remember this is another scriptable object. So we're going to follow the same pattern by having attack configuration dot scale up for level, passing in the scaling in the level because the damage is defined in here. And if you wanted to also modify things like the attack rate, attack range, you would also include that in the attack configuration. And we'll get there in just a second. For the health, what we'll do is scaled up enemy.health equals mathf floor to int passing in the health times the scaling.health curve dot evaluate where we pass in the time as the level. So at level one, we'll do health, whatever health we define, times scaling dot health curve dot evaluate one. So if we have the health curve at time one to be less than one, we would say that the level one is actually easier than whatever we defined on the enemy scriptable object. I'd recommend against that having your base values be the level one values, and then your scaling will always scale up. So all of your curves will start with time at one being one, and then scale up from there. Most of the rest of these values we're just going to copy. So we'll do scale up enemy default state is the default state, idle location radius, idle location radius, and so on until we get down to speed because speed is another thing we define a curve for. For that one, we will do scaled up enemy dot speed equals speed times scaling dot speed curve dot evaluate passing in the level as the time again. So the same concept here, but because speed is a float, we don't have to wrap it with mathf dot floor to end. We'll assign the stopping distance and then we'll return the scaled up enemy. So from here, let's go over to the attack configuration and do basically the same thing in there, scaling up the damage. So in here, we will define a public attack scriptable object scale up for level with the same signature of accepting a scaling scriptable object scaling and an int level. We'll do the same thing of attack scriptable object scaled up configuration equals create instance, but this time we'll pass in the type of attack scriptable object. We'll assign the is range to be this is ranged, and then for the damage, we'll follow the same thing we did for the health with damage equals mathf dot floor to int damage time scaling dot damage curve dot evaluate with the time as the level. And all the rest of the values will just directly copy and then return the scaled up configuration. And remember that you can of course scale any of these values following this exact same pattern. So if we wanted the attack delay to scale, for example, whenever we define our curve, we would define that as a curve that starts at one and goes down to as low as we'd like it to be. So if maybe we have a one second attack delay, if the curve ended at 0.1, then at whatever level you set that to be, the attack delay would be 0.1 seconds between attacks, which would be a very fast attack speed. Now that our scaling works, let's go ahead and integrate that into our round based spawn enemy spawner. To make the inspector a little bit more clean, I'm going to add an attribute space, which will provide a little bit of extra space in the inspector, and then a header that's going to just say Reddit runtime. That way we know that setting these in the inspector is not required and they're just really there for our information. And we'll group the level underneath that, and we'll also create a new serialized field private list enemy scriptable object scaled enemies equal to a new list of enemy scriptable objects. Now this part's important, and the way that we designed our scriptable objects, if you don't do that where we return a new enemy 
semi scriptable object each time will actually be modifying the base values of our configurations at runtime. What that means is as we run our game, our base values will get scaled up and they won't behave the same as we expected to. So whatever we define in the inspector and the scriptable objects that we create in our project, we don't want to modify those at runtime. We want to create new instances of the scriptable objects based on the base values and then scale those that we just have in memory. So that way our game doesn't just get harder the more the user plays. And if that doesn't make too much sense, we're going to look at it in the inspector once we get to that demo. So keep watching, we're going to get there and I'll explain and show that more during the demo. In the start function, what we'll do is add all of the base configuration enemies into the scaled enemies list. So we'll do for int i equals zero, i less than enemies count, incrementing i by one. We'll do scaled enemies dot add, enemies index by i dot scale up for level, scaling in zero. We'll pass in level zero by default. And we'll see I forgot to define the scaling. So we'll go up to the top and add a public scaling scriptable object called scaling. Then we'll go down to the spawn enemies coroutine. And in here, we'll do another loop, very similar to what we just didn't start. But instead of adding new enemy scriptable objects to this list, what we're going to do is just say scaled enemies index by i is going to equal to enemies index by i that we scale up for the level, passing in the scaling in the level. So the previous loop, we populated the scaled enemies enemy scriptable objects to have the correct size. And then and whenever we're spawning the enemies, we're going to override each of those indices with the newly scaled up enemy after we've incremented the level. But remember, we also said that we were going to scale up the number of enemies that we were going to spawn and also scale down the delay between those enemy spawns. So to achieve this, what we're going to do is add two more private variables, a private int initial enemies to spawn and a private float initial spawn delay. And on awake, we will assign those two values to be whatever we've set up in the inspector as the number of enemies to spawn and the spawn delay. And then since we have two ways to change our round or our level, I'm going to make a private void scale up spawns where we will do the scaling up of the number of enemies to spawn and the spawn delay. We'll do this the exact same way we just did for the enemies where we have number of enemies to spawn equals mathf dot floor to int taking the initial enemies to spawn and multiplying by the scaling dot spawn count curve evaluating. And here I'm going to put level plus one instead of level because we actually increment the level within the spawn enemies coroutine and I want to call this before I start that new coroutine. And I'll do the same thing for the spawn delay, saying spawn delay equals initial spawn delay times scaling dot spawn rate curve evaluating again at level plus one. You'll actually notice here that I wrote spawn delay times equals initial spawn delay times the scaling, and that's not right. It should be spawn delay equals initial spawn delay. Otherwise, the spawn delay is going to like exponentially go in the direction of your scaling. So don't do times equals, just do equals. And if we just look down a little bit below where we have handle enemy death, whenever we're just about to start the next round, we're going to scale up our spawns and then start spawning enemies. And remember, in the spawn enemies coroutine, if continuous spawning is turned on, we're also going to start a coroutine there. So right before we start spawning more enemies for the next level, we'll scale up the spawns and then start that spawning coroutine. And one last thing is whenever we're doing the do spawn enemy, we want to make sure that we're referencing the scaled enemies and not just the enemies. Otherwise, all the scaling we're doing doesn't do anything. So don't forget this step. If we hop back to the Unity editor, first thing I'll do is right click in the project, create scriptable object scaling configuration and I'll name it to be simple scaling. I'm first going to set this up with really kind of ludicrous scaling just so we can really see that it's working. So I'll set up a health config choosing this straight across line by default and then I'll add a new key where I set the time to be 10 and the value to be 10. What that means is every level the health will double which is a very crazy idea but we'll really get to see the results very quickly with this. And I'll set the tangents of both of these points the right on the left one and the left on the right one to be linear so I get that really just straight line or always doubling the base health every for the damage curve, we'll do the same thing, but I'll keep it with kind of a go up really fast and then kind of flatten out at the top curve. So we'll see them at lower levels quickly pick up damage and then eventually it'll kind of pick up much slower. For speed, we'll do it a little bit less aggressive where at level 10 they will have doubled in how fast they move. For spawn rate, remember that we want to go down because this is the delay. We want it to maybe by time 10 be at value 0.5, meaning by level 10 or there will be half as long of a wait in between spawning enemies. And for the spawn count, we'll do something maybe by level 10, we have a value of 20 to really just have a bunch of enemies coming at us. You can of course play with all of these values in these curves to find out what difficulty best suits your game. 
The last important thing is to make sure we drag that scaling scriptable object we just created to the enemy manager reference. What I'm going to do is add a second inspector tab and I'll lock the one on the right to be on the enemy manager so I can quickly jump between enemy scriptable objects to compare the two. So at level one, if I click on the basic enemy scale, we'll see that the health is still 100, the speed is still two, nothing has changed. If I compare that to the original, it's all the exact same. There's no changes in these values. And if we hit level two, we'll see my health has doubled. So now the basic enemy has 200 health instead of just the 100. We'll also see that the number of enemies to spawn has gone up to three and the spawn delay has slightly decreased. If I go into the attack configuration, we'll see I have 18 damage now instead of the 5 that I had before. And remember, this is more aggressive because we did that really aggressive curve on the damage where it goes up really fast and then kind of peaks. If I look at the damage curve and I add a key around the level 2, we see that it should be about almost four times the initial, which is just about where we got to. And if you watched the last video, AI series part 18, where we did burst spawning enemies, since we're reusing this enemy manager to spawn all our enemies, the really cool thing is any burst spawn enemies will also be scaled up to whatever level we're on. So in this case, I'm on level three and I see all these enemies spawn, they got scaled up already to be the correct level and there'll be a really scary, challenging burst spawn compared to if they were the level one enemies. I hope you got a lot of value added to today's video and you understand how to implement round spawning in the two ways we talked about today. One where the player has to clear all of the enemies before the next wave starts, and the other one where the next wave automatically starts after the last enemy was spawned. I hope you also understand how to implement scaling up of enemies using the animation curves, and why it's really important to keep your base configuration of scriptable objects for your enemies separate from the scaled value. And if you have been getting value out of this video or the series, please consider liking and subscribing to help the channel grow, reach more people, and add value to more people. This new video is posted every single Tuesday, sometimes on other days too. And if you have any questions, if you have a suggestion for a topic, or if you're implementing AI into your game, specifically, I'd like to hear about any round spawning and scaling up of enemies that you've implemented in your games. Drop a comment down below and I'll see you on the next video.